Hi, my name is Steph and I'm here today with my friend Nancy. And we want to talk to you today about elderberries. Um, a lot of publicity is out there about how wonderful elderberries are in fighting colds and flus. And we're coming up on the end of summer here in Tennessee, which is the perfect time for us to, um, at least in our area, you can go out and find elderberries growing in the highways and the byways. And Nancy's an expert on that, and she's gonna show you how to make your own tincture. If you have a very large um, family and you want these immune boosting properties, um, she's gonna show you how to, how to make this um, from either some that you've harvested or that you can order online um, in the dried form. And also, um, I want to tell you that they, for those of you that are just overwhelmed at the very thought of having to make something yourself from scratch, there is a product that we really like. Um, it's a completely raw elderberry product um, called Berry Well. And it has um, the elderberry and raw honey, raw apple cider, apple cider vinegar, and propolis extract in it. And it's if for what you can buy on, in the, on the market, it's the best that we've ever found. So if you have to buy something, um, this, is what we, this is what we really love and use. Um, but Nancy's gonna show us how we can get some of these amazing elderberry properties and do it at home for our families. Well, making a tincture and, or taking a tincture is not as tasty as Berry Well. Um, our son absolutely loves it. He pretends like he's sick sometimes <laughs> so he can have it. That's that raw honey. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, first, if you're not comfortable going in a liquor store, you'd have to do it anyway because you're going to have to buy either vodka or brandy, um, and you can explain to them that you're making vanilla or a tincture for health purposes if it makes you uncomfortable. But um, anyway, uh, you want to buy uh, at least 80 proof, if not higher, um, vodka. I'm not sure that brandy has the same thing. We in our family don't use brandy. Um, which is another recipe. You'll find recipes online all over the place, but the brandy is not okay when you're on the GAPS diet, the gut mm -hmm. and psychology syndrome, whereas a little bit of vodka is uh, uh, all right on the GAPS diet. And since our family's following that, um, we try to be really careful. And again, I mean, you're getting a teeny tiny bit anyway. So it's, it's going to be dosed like a medicine, right? It's I mean, just it's, like, it's, like a, it's just a medicine. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it, it just, it, it, you're not going to even, your body's not going to notice any of the alcohol stuff from it. But uh, anyway, um, first of all, our, our, you saw that our family went out. I like to put the children in the back of the truck and we go out down our, we live in the country. We go down, uh, like they like fence rows, um, kind of sunny spots. Um, right now, it's September 1st as we're doing this mm -hmm. video, and a lot of them that were in the full sun have dried up, and then there's some that are still green. So, you know, end of, in the summertime, at least in Tennessee, it might be a little bit uh, later or earlier, I'm not sure, in the uh, other parts of the country that, that grow elderberries. Now, when, if someone's going out to do wild harvesting, I just want to throw out there a caution. There are some elderberry lookalikes that yes. are very toxic. Good. You want to make sure that you are, one, finding the right thing and making sure that it's the right kind of elderberry. And second of all, that the um, if you find a place to get it, that you find it uh, in a place that hasn't been sprayed. You don't want it near a field that's been sprayed. And you don't want it too near a highway because the, the pollution from the cars driving by can affect it as well. So if you're, you know, if you have a good source for it, like we're fortunate enough to have in our part of Tennessee, definitely, um, you know, if you can gather it yourself, hey, it's free. It's free medicine it's free. that God and it's has fine. just put there. <laughs> and, um, but it's a good idea to leave at least a blossom or two, you know, of berries um, for, for the next for year. the birds to eat and spread. So that you and all of your friends that you uh, tell about this um, will also have a place to go get elderberries <laughs> the next time. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can also buy them dried online. And um, these are some, because we did pick our own, as you saw, um, I dried, and so they look like t teeny tiny little raisins. They do, really. they look like tiny they raisins. Cute? They're adorable. Yeah. <laughs> They're not real good. Some people say that you can get, uh, kind of feel sick if you eat them raw. None of us have ever experienced that. They just, they're gritty because they have lots of little seeds. And, um, they're, they're just kind of blah. They're not nasty, but they're just blah. So, but you know, it won't hurt you if you eat them raw, as long as they're really elderberries, not pope berries or sumac or red elderberry. Yeah. They need to have black. When they're ripe, they're almost black, okay? So I have a question for you. I see that you have some fresh ones here yes. and some dried ones. Now, do you, can you make the tincture straight out of the fresh ones or do you have to dry them first? It is preferable. We'll start with the, the, the ones here. I froze them in the freezer. Actually, what the, the best thing to do is when you pick your flower, your uh, thing, it looks kind of like round like this, 
Um, and when you pick it, just throw the whole shebang, it's got all these teeny tiny little stems on it, into a Ziploc bag and freeze it. And then after it's frozen, you can take it out and the little berries will come off of the stems very easily. It's much easier than doing it when they're fresh because the stems have some stuff in them that you don't really that want in That is toxic. toxic, yeah. yeah. And also so, the um, thing about freezing yes. is it helps to break down those cell walls to allow more of the good medicinal properties to um, leach out when you make your tincture. Yes. So the freezing serves the two purposes. It does, it does. So it's really easy. After that- So these are, these are previously these frozen and now they've frozen. thawed. Note that they're in an old peanut butter jar. You can use <laughs> any kind of jar. It doesn't have to be a perfect canning jar. I didn't have two canning jars, so that's why I'm using a peanut butter jar, and that works just fine. Um, you freeze them, and then you stick them in a jar, and you let them thaw, and then, this is my sauerkraut pounder. It's just an old stick of wood, but you can use anything. You just muddle them up a little bit. Oh, look at that rich juice. It's just so beautiful. Isn't that cool? Love it. And uh, I don't know if y'all can see on the camera, you might smash around a little bit and notice some things that look a little bit like bugs. They're just seeds. Don't freak <laughs> out. Um, elderberries do have certain bugs that like to be on them, but if you give your blossom a good shake, that'll get all of them off. Otherwise, you just freeze them and they'll be gone one way or the other. Okay, so you take that out, and the next thing that you're going to do, if you're using fresh berries, there's a couple that are stuck up there. If you're doing fresh berries, uh, they're not going to be as potent uh, strength-wise as the dried berries, and so uh, I do almost like half berries and, and half, half vodka. Okay, or mm -hmm. I'm there. Mark my finger so that it looks. It's not the so have basically 50-50 ratio yeah, 50 if you're going to use the frozen fresh ones. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, that's good. Oh, it's already got such a rich, beautiful color. Now, that's it. All you do, you give it a good shake. You put it, if you had a dark glass thing, you could leave it on the counter, but for a regular jar, you just set it in a cabinet where you won't forget. And every day or two, you can flip it like this if you want. If you're kind of paranoid about the contents of the lid, maybe having metal or something on it, just give it a good shake. And how it. long, yeah, how long did it, can you leave Four it? Four weeks minimum, six weeks preferable. Um, after six weeks, you can start drawing it off. Okay. Um, or uh, the longer you leave it, it'll get a little bit stronger. Um, I'll talk about the dosages in just a second. Okay, so now for these dried, the dried ones, ones, what is the ratio? It's the same thing. I put these in our dehydrator, dried them for, oh, I, I didn't even look at, see what exactly what temperature it was. I keep it low to keep mm -hmm. the enzymes alive. Um, so it probably took uh, almost 24 hours, I guess, because I kept it so low. So they're dried. I'm gonna stick these that I was showing you back into the lid. And because they're more potent, you they're do concentrated, yeah. roughly one third, they're like raisins compared to grapes as far yeah. as this, this, what I'm saying, potency. You do one third of the berries to two thirds of the, with the vodka, which is gonna take it almost up to the top. Yeah. We've gotta now, leave room so you've got shaking room. Now, Nancy, this is um, not going to be necessarily the tastiest of things when it's done. Do you think it would be okay if a mom were to, you know, take a tablespoon out serving and mix it with some honey, raw honey, or something like that to make it a little easier for the kids to get down? I mean, because it seems like this would be a, you know, this is pretty strong medicine yes. in its current you form. You can definitely do that. It says that, uh, uh, I've read online that you can add the uh, echinacea tincture if you want mm -hmm. to, to make Give it, it an more extra like boost. the Berry yeah. Well stuff, and the honey, if it's raw, right. um, can help. Um, the, the, what we just do is you can just put a little bit in some water and chug it. Um, uh, Natasha Campbell McBride from the GAPS Diet is really big on elderberries. If you would like, you can just go pick them and freeze them and then eat a few raw ones every single day during the cold and flu season and you will uh, probably not get sick. If you do, um, then you can either up, what I would suggest about a teaspoon um, for adults every day and a half teaspoon for children every day of this. Um, and you can transfer this into those little dark jars, or, you know, mm -hmm. little things with a dropper and with if the you want amber to. amber glass or something like that. If you're doing droppers, you're talking 20 to 30 drops for a teaspoon, yeah, roughly. And it's not gonna hurt if you do a little more or a little less, but if you try and do it every single day, if you do happen to still get a cold or, or start feeling the flu, hit it right when it starts. And one of the good yep. things to do 
um, well, personally, we would get the berry well out at that point and, and hit it every four hours. Uh, what, a teaspoon? Mm -hmm. we, sometimes we don't measure, <laughs> pour it. <laughs> it's so good and it won't hurt. But um, if not, you can up this to uh, taking this like a teaspoon every four hours if you're an adult or half for a child. And, um, and just, it'll keep for a long time. The, the alcohol, the purpose for it is to bring out all the goodies in the elderberries and it will preserve it for maybe even three or more years but just keep it in a nice dark spot. And don't forget to shake it, at least for that first six weeks or so. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot, you've got to get all this goop out of there then. So at that point, you get a colander or a strainer, put mm -hmm. some cheesecloth or a um, unbleached muslin or an old handkerchief or just strain a, a pillowcase and strain it through and then store that stuff in a dark place. And uh, that's it. All right, well thank yeah. you so much for showing us how to do this, Nancy. And if you're like me, and you haven't had time to go out and gather your own um, elderberries, I personally buy mine dried from www.morethanalive.com. They have a great price and their elderberries are really um, safe as well if you wanna make this for your family. Well, Nancy, thanks so much for coming That's and showing fun. us how to do this. Yeah.